Okay. I want to continue where the devotee last week. And uh, uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 2. I'm going to read from verse 8 to 11. Right? Verse 8 to 11, Revelation chapter 2. And uh, we will see how uh, I will advise you after what we are going to do. Okay, Revelation chapter 2, verse 8 to 11. Verse 8 says, And unto the angel of the church in Simarna, right, these things say the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and, and the tribulation and the poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them, say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, that ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be now faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that had a ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Now, if you look at these few verses, it is actually the message to the church in Simarna. And Simarna was a persecuted church. Obviously, I can't finish all the, the, the points that I want to share this week. Right? So, we will look at two verses, which is the first two verses, verse 8 and verse 9. Alright, now let's look at verse 8 and 9 again. And unto the angel of the church in Simarna write, these things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them say they are Jews, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Amen? Amen. Now, the church, you know, sometimes we, we also go through situations, as I told you, every letter that, that, that we find in Revelation, also talks to us as a church today. Now, the church is sometimes called upon to suffer terrible persecution. Like terrible persecution. And this has always been true down through history. Right? And it was certainly true in Simarna. The church was under heavy attack. This church in Simarna was under heavy attack from both the community and the city hall. Right, or city officials, which is the government. And there was even more horrible persecution lying over the horizon. Right? But note, the church was faithful to Christ. The church was faithful to the mission of God. They never gave up. The church was standing fast for the truth. Against all attacks, Nothing could stop them, right? And it was a church in which nothing was wrong. Jesus, the Christ, never mentioned anything wrong about this church, right? This is a, the, the, the church with the testimony, right? There is nothing of any major significance. Therefore, it was one of the few churches that Christ did not have to warn. Right? If you look at the earlier church, there was something that he warned them about. But this church, he didn't give any warning to them. Timarna is the picture of just what a church should be. A dynamic witness for Jesus Christ. Through all circumstances, no matter the trials or temptations. We got to stand for Jesus Christ. It is the picture of a church that loves the Lord. That love the Lord enough to stand up for Him, even when the community attacks its witness. Right now, when you look at verse eight, you will see that they are the recipients of the letter. Right now, who is the recipient of the letter? The letter is addressed to the minister of the church. Now, why do I say the minister of the church? Remember, always remember this: the Greek word for the for the word angel means both angel and it also means messenger. Right? 
many times people think that it means a special angel assigned uh, to the church, but it can also be mean a messenger, and that means an earthly messenger. And who is the earthly messenger of the church? In the case of the church, the meaning is the messenger or the minister of the church. That means the pastor of the church in today's terms. Right? Now this is significant. This is important. For it means that the minister of the church or the pastor of the church is held responsible for the church. It is not just being glamour. Having the glamour of being a minister or a pastor. The pastor is accountable. The pastor is responsible for the church. In Sumerna, Sumerna, in the case of this church, this church that was persecuted, the minister is to take the lead in standing fast against persecution. We don't expect the sheep to stand and the minister to run away. The minister takes the lead, right? He is to stand forth for Christ and lead his people to stand for Christ. He is not to buckle under, under and deny Christ. There are many ministers today with a lot of beautiful titles. We pray that when that time comes, they will stand for Christ. Yeah. You know, a few years back, a couple of years back, uh, you know, we had this, uh, what is this terrorist group called? They went to Al-Qaeda. Al no, not Al-Qaeda. Yeah. Uh, you know, they went to, uh, 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 they started slashing the heads of uh, families and women and children. I'm sure you all saw all those on yeah. videos. Oh, that's Iraq, right? Iraq and all over oh, the world. Yeah, yeah. Okay. ISIS. ISIS. ISIS, right? Now, when ISIS attacked, you know, when I saw those women, those innocent children, those innocent men who were slaughtered, who had their heads chopped off. But you know what? They still prayed at the hour of their death. Those are the apostles. Those are the evangelists. Those are the prophets. Those are the teachers and the pastors. You know why? They stood for Christ even at death. We have to be like that. This is the new norm. You know, today I was talking to somebody and, and keep on saying, oh, you know, I cannot go on like this. I can. Well, if you cannot go on, you got to get used to it. Because every time they say that it's coming to an end, a new wave hits. There's a reason why the government officials, not only in Malaysia, but all over the world started or begin to use this new term called the new norm. Mm. There is a hidden agenda. In the long run, you are talking about one world government, you are talking about one world religious, one world system. This is the beginning. So they call it the new norm. They don't want you to talk. It's worse than communism. That's why you've got to use a cloth across your face. That's right. People can't even see you these days. Yeah. Right? So we are still not to deny Christ in this, even in these situations. We do not know what's going to happen tomorrow. Because tomorrow doesn't seem to reflect any hope or any light. But I can tell you something. We have hope. Not materialistic blessing, but we have hope. Because if anything happens, we <laughs> are fellowshipping with our God. Full stop. Right? So no matter how severe the, 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 the persecution may be, no matter how severe the situations may be, the minister is to lead the people to hold the banner of Christ high. We are to lead and you are to follow obediently. Right? Even if it means martyrdom. You know what is to be martyred? To be murdered for Christ. Okay? The minister and his people are to do what Christ says to do in this letter. I believe... Uh, in Malaysia, we, we, we go through this thing, what, which I, what I call silent persecution. Right? No violence, but silently we are persecuted, the church. Right? So, even at this point, with all these things happening, 
we got to st to stand fast and stand up for Christ right now i want to give you a little bit three points on simarna on simarna this town all right now simarna had three historical facts that seem to have a bearing upon the message to the church number one Sim simarna means bitter it means bitter right that's the meaning of the word it received its name from myrrh one of its chief commercial products right one of its chief commercial products was myrrh and myrrh was a gum like resin that taken from a shrub that was very bitter it was used in making perfume right in psalm 45 verse 8 we see that it was used in making perfume oil for embalming for purification of women for relieving and, and, and dulling pain and it should be noted that this church was experiencing what its name said the same thing the church was experiencing what the the, 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 the place was called right it was bitter the church was experiencing bitterness the church was experiencing sorrow affliction and persecution right Simarna was a proud city it was proud of its culture its beauty its commercial wealth its social life right its citizens called uh, called it the first city in asia right there was a municipal vanity among the people everyone tried to climb the social ladder a step further than his neighbor that means there was competition everyone wanted the first place everyone wanted the highest seat everyone wanted the most recognition and to this christ proclaims loudly and clearly you know in verse 8 you see christ proclaiming something he says i am the first and last i am the one who has the crown of life in verse 10 he says that and thirdly simarna was persecuted or, or was persecuting the church severely the people of Simarna was persecuting the church severely. The city had a large number of Jews. And these Jews were influential in the city and in the politics of that city. The Jews were, of course, steeped in the Old Testament and the prophecies of the Messiah. Right? And many of the early converts of, to Christ were Jews. Now, here in this city... The reaction of the Jews was severe, right? Now, if you read the letters of Paul, you will understand that Paul's greatest enemies were actually the Jews. They went after him. And in this city, it was severe. The Jews persecuted the church severely. They reacted severely and did all they could to influence city officials to stamp out the church. The Christian believer knew God personally. The believer knew God in intimately. Therefore, he could not worship. He could not participate in festivals to the God and the goddesses of that day in that city. So he was marked. When he refused to worship the God and goddess of that city, he was marked. In some cases, jobs were lost. And in all cases, social life within the city was severed. Mockery, abuse, scorn, and persecution were applied. When Jesus says he's the first and the last, it is a promise that he is with the believer through it all. From the very first to the very last. He knows that what the believer is going through, for he has suffered not only the threat of death, but death itself. Amen. Amen. So that should tell you a little bit about the city and the background of the city, historically. Now, let me continue with verse 8. We see initially the speaker. Who is the speaker? We know the speaker is Jesus Christ himself. Nobody mm -hmm. else. Jesus Christ himself. Christ has a very special message for the church 
that is suffering persecution, that is going through these troubles. And his message is wrapped up in two titles. There are two titles Christ mentions there in verse 8. The first one, Christ says, he is the first and the last. That means he is the one supreme authority. There's no other authority. Christ is the one supreme authority and he's the ruler over life. Persecutors, who are the government officials or who were the government officials, and some citizens who persecute and cause trouble for other people may think that they hold authority over life. You know, sometimes when you are persecuted, you feel that the government has got the authority. You feel the people who are persecuting you have got the authority. And they feel that they have the authority over life. But they do not. They do not. They may claim to be the first and the last. They may claim to have the final word and authority. But they are deceived. There is only one first and last. Only one supreme authority. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. The Son of God Himself. Amen. Amen. This means that all persecutors, all those who afflict and cause trouble for others, they better take heed. They shall be judged if they assert and take authority over human life. They shall be judged if they take authority over human life into their own hands. There is only one authority over life. I want you to remember this as only one authority in your life, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, all people are to look to Him. Any person who persecutes, any person who causes trouble for other people shall face His judgment. Mm -hmm. I am not saying this. Scripture says this. Right? In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. The writer of Hebrews says this. And as... It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. The judgment. Yeah. Hebrews 9 verse 27. Right? Secondly, when we talk about he's the first and the last, this means that believers have the presence of Christ with them. We have the presence of Christ with us. Amen. Through all the troubles, through all the persecutions mm. of life. Amen. Jesus Christ is the first and the last. He is always there. Yes. Amen. Amen. He is there with us when the trouble first begins. He is there with us when the trouble is going on. He is there with us when the trouble ends. Mm. He is always there. Right. right. Jesus Christ is the first and the last. He spends time. All the minutes, all the hours of time, yes. He is there. His mm. presence covers all the problems. Mm. His, his presence covers circumstances, all the troubles of human life. Mm. Jesus Christ is always in charge of what happens to us. Amen. He controls the circumstances, the troubles, no matter what happens. No matter what happens, He is there. Amen. Therefore, He will work all things out for our good. Amen. For our good. Amen. Amen. Let me give you another scripture to back that up. John chapter 8 verse 58. John chapter 8 verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Secondly, the second title that Christ uses is this. Christ says that he is the one who was dead and is alive again. He is the one who was dead and alive again. The word was really means became. That means Christ became dead. Now the meaning of the word Christ is the anointed one, the Messiah. Right? Now he became dead. His death was not only a passing phase, an episode he had to go through. Jesus, the Christ, experienced death. But death was only a passing thing for him. Right? He triumphed over death. A life is, is, a, is a aorist, aorist 
tense in the Greek. In the Greek, it's a te it's a aorist tense. Uh, it's a one for it's, it means a one for all act. That's what it means. An act that is once and for all. Once it is done, it is done. That means once it is done, it is completed. Once it is done, it is finished. So Jesus came to life again. He arose. Therefore, the message to the church is this. No matter what you experience, it is a passing episode. It's a passing episode. Even if you experience death, it has been conquered by the Christ. Christ has personally been there and triumphed over both pain and death. He, you know, even pain he experienced. Right? So therefore the believer shall live forever and ever if he is martyred. Even if it comes to the time where we are persecuted and we are martyred, we know one thing for sure. We shall live forever and ever. Amen. The next phase is living forever and ever. Yes. Nothing else. Amen? Amen. That is the greatest reward one can have. I think this is we really need to pray for the strength. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen? Amen. Let's look at verse nine of chapter two. Verse nine. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know that the I know the blasphemy of them say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now this is where Christ commends the church. Right? He commends the church for four things. He commends the church for four things. Number one, he commends the church. Because the church bore up under terrible tribulation. Right? Now the word tribulation there means affliction. It means the pressure of crushing affliction. That's what it means. You're broken. You got nowhere else to go. The word indicates that the trials and persecutions was more severe. Severe persecution. Right? But the believers were holding up under the attacks. They were refusing to deny Christ. They were faithful to Christ despite all the ridicule, despite all the mockery, abuse, cursing, loss of property, possible imprisonment and martyrdom. Despite all these situations, they stood with Christ. And Christ commended them for it. Amen? Amen. You know, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 17 to 18, Matthew chapter 10, verse 17 to 18, Jesus says this, But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues, and you, and you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Jesus already said it will happen. The second thing that Jesus commended this church was this church bore up under poverty. The idea is that of having nothing and of being destitute and beggarly. That's how poor this church was. Apparently many were being forced out of their jobs and having their properties confiscated as lawbreakers. Right? They were called lawbreakers because they didn't want to listen to what they said. They wanted to continue worshipping Christ. What happened was this, Rome at that time had instituted a law that said that the state had to be the first loyalty of a citizen. Rome came up with a law. The first law was that the people have to, the state has to be the first loyalty for every citizen. To show that loyalty, the citizen had to proclaim his loyalty once a year. This he did by going before the local government officials and making the statement, Caesar is Lord. That means they have to go to the local government office in front of an officer and take an oath and say Caesar is Lord. And of course, a true believer of Jesus Christ could not do this because there's only one Lord and, the Lord, and that Lord is Jesus Christ. So this was the reason the church was being attacked 
so severely and this is the reason why the church suffered so much. In Matthew 8 verse 20 Jesus says this, and Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds have ha of the air have nests, but the Son of Man had not where to lay his head. The third thing the church was commended for was that the church was spiritually wealthy. You see, in the world physically they were poor, but the church was spiritually wealthy. Right? They were outwardly poor, but inwardly, they were rich towards the Lord and His mission. They were faithful to the Lord. Now remember, they were faithful to the Lord. They loved Him. They loved one another, even those who opposed them. This is what, remember, we discussed, I think, last week or the week before that. This is what we call agape love. Right? They were ministering to all in need. Although they were persecuted, they still ministered to those in need. They were studying and, and teaching the scriptures. They were living righteous and holy lives. And because of their faithfulness, they were filled with all the fullness of God's presence. Because of their faithfulness, God poured out upon them the riches of His grace, the fruit of His Spirit. Right? As they walked day by day, they were filled with love, with joy, with peace, with long-suffering. With, with the fruit of gentleness and goodness, with faith and meekness and self-control. God flooded them and carried them through their trials. God was there. He strengthened them. He settled them. He empowered them. He assured them with His presence, mm. the very presence of God Himself. Yeah. Let me tell you this, people. We might be small today. People may say all kinds of things about us outside. Don't worry. You know why? Because we carry the presence of God with us. Amen. 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 In Matthew 6 verse 20, <clears throat> this is what Jesus says. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 20, He says, But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust do, do it corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Lay up treasures in heaven. And the fourth thing that Jesus commanded this church for was they bore up under all kinds of slander. The slander came especially from the Jews of the city. As I told you earlier, the Jews were the ones persecuting. There was a large community of Jews in this city. And we know from historians that they were very prosperous. And they made large gifts to the arts and to the culture development of the city. As a result, they were influential with the city officials and with the local Roman government. And as I said earlier, it was the Jews who were stirring up so much trouble against the church. Now, I want you to note how they went about it. They slandered the believers. They used their tongues to ridicule, to mock, to lie, to spread rumors to accuse, to backbite, to criticize, to murmur, to, to, to talk about, to tear down, to discriminate, to divide. But note what Christ says about the slandering Jews. He said they may profess to be Jews, but they are not. They are the synagogue of Satan. Now, this is a very, very, I would say it's a terrible title to get from Christ. The synagogue of Satan. What does this mean? It simply means the Jews were not God's appointed people during the Old Testament period of history. Before Christ came into the world. They were the people whom God had raised up to be his witnesses upon the earth. But many of them had failed to believe. Many of them failed to follow God. In fact, they had even killed God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Jews in this city professed to be Jews, to be followers of God, but they were not. They were persecuting the real followers of God. They were persecuting those who believed and worshipped the Lord Jesus Christ. 
the Son of God Himself. Therefore, they were not worshippers of God, not the one true living God. On the contrary, they were worshippers of Satan. I want you to think about this because, or to note this down, because this is a strong message to every church. And remember, the church is you and I put together. It's a strong message to us. We are either an assembly of God, we are either a people of the true and living God, or of Satan. That is why we don't compromise. That is why we don't bring in the, I mean, we don't do things like the world does. Because we are either God's people, or we are people of Satan. It all depends on whether or not we worship and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. We are a true church if we proclaim, if we stand up for Christ in the midst of an evil and corrupt world. A world that slanders those who live righteously and godly lives. You know, when you live a godly life, people will slander you. Correct? They will say, why are you so holy? Huh? They will say all sorts of things. They'll probably start singing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, when you start walking near them. Not so much of us, but I think the young, the young generation, the youths, when you go and meet your friends outside, they may slander you. They may say, here comes the Lord of Lords. <laughs> but you know what? Keep on standing for Jesus. I was working with, all the time I was working with, uh, uh, Muslim organizations, right? So even Sister uh, 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 Jacqueline, you know, in your situation, you might you 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 might be sometimes put in a situation where you cannot stand because you are overshadowed, you are outnumbered. But I want you all to remember this tonight in Matthew 10, Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 to 33. This is what Jesus says. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever therefore shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage you this evening to keep on, keep the faith, no matter the situation. Because when we confess Jesus in the presence of men, he will confess us before the Father. Amen. 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 I want to close this time with a prayer. We want to pray for Sunday, our, our service, that all will go well and be closed. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us of, of, of your pleasures, of, of the promises that you that you will give us, Lord, the rewards that you will give us, Lord, when we stand for you despite persecution, despite slander, despite poverty, despite whatever we are facing through all those challenges, Lord, yes. that, Lord, that if we stand with you, Lord, that you will confess us mm -hmm. and you will stand with us before the Father. Amen. So, Lord, tonight we pray and we thank you, Lord. You have heard all our prayers. You have heard, Lord, all what we, we need. And, Lord, you know what we are going through during this season. So, Lord, we thank you and we pray, Lord, that you, you, you will never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have always been with us. Amen. And we pray tonight, Lord, for even the, the service on Sunday, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you continue, you continue to protect us, your church. Mm. Protect that building, Lord, yes. from this virus, from tap, mm. from robbers, from, from, from lightning, from, from floods and fire. Mm. And protect us, your people. Mm. Even as we come to meet to worship you, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you connect us, Lord, to the people who need you. Yes. Bring in the people, Lord, mm. in that area that need to hear from you. Amen. Bring in the people who need a touch from you. Yes. Bring in the people who need that hope, Lord, mm. that you are the Christ. Amen. And Lord, I even pray for these, our people, Lord, every family in our church, 
even those who are not able to be with us tonight. Mm. We pray for your grace to be upon us. Yes. For your love to be upon us. Mm. And for the fellowship of the Holy Spirit Amen. to remain with us. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Wow. Oh,